Welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Just uh, some driving thoughts. You know, it's kind of all over the board, maybe. Who knows? Uh, headed uh, to our monthly meeting place. Got the last load uh, here in the truck. This month we're doing something different. We're just having a big family dinner. Uh, figured we'd do that once this year instead of the standard structured meeting in this time of the year would be a good thing for that. Uh, for a lot of people, you know, they don't have family or their family or they're estranged from their family because of their beliefs, whether it's political or religious or both. And so they don't have family to, you know, blood relatives to be with during any type of, you know, holiday celebration. And so also we're doing this for them so that they can have um, a time with, with their other family. Because in the end, what we're doing it's about really supporting and, and and building up traditional families i mean that's that's really what we're prepared for right uh above all else so it's it's a gonna be a long day but yet exciting and looking forward to gathering again with so many like-minded individuals and just having a, a good old time um just some thoughts on my mind um and this is all random but this whole <clears throat> thing, I'm not so sure it's completely gone away. Uh, and I'm just putting things together in my head, which doesn't always mean a whole lot. But there's been a whole lot more in the news. You know, it was like with the whole Russia thing and the economy thing, you, we didn't hear anything about it. It was, it was like it was a done deal. Even at one point, the president said, the pandemic's over. And then of course they retracted that and said, no, 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 that's not what he meant. But here in the last week or so, we've been seeing a lot more in the news about it, about people getting sick, about flus, about, you know, uh, was it RBS, um, the respiratory virus, um, and then the, the, the corona stuff. And I've also been seeing more in the news in regards to China. China is just, it's a mess right now. And people are pushing back in China. They've had enough of it, but if you look at their numbers, uh, they're claiming that their daily case count is higher than it's ever been since the beginning. Um, and there's been little bits of reports from people saying that, well, they believe that this next go around with it might be worse than anything before. It might be the most contagious and all this kind of stuff. HHS the other day sent a report to the White House recommending that mask mandates be implemented. You know, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, oh, and then another thing, just in the, my circle of people that I know, I've known several in the last few days that someone or all of them and their family have come down sick. Now, it could just be the normal seasonal thing, right? Because it's that time of the year that people get coughs and sniffles and, and all that. But um, it's whether or not that's all it is or, or isn't, I think that there's a possibility that we're going to see a a new uh, burst of oh mandates and things like that it's gonna get bad and we gotta we gotta react severely to it because it plays within our our role and who knows maybe this time it'll be worse so that's one thing to think about to just kind of be aware of just be watching you know watching the news how it seems like and maybe I'm wrong but that there's been kind of an uptick in reporting on it from all over the globe um, good and bad, but still uh, an increase in, in talk and in conversation about illnesses. And uh, I've seen that there was just different things, like one the other day that you know there's a we're on the verge of a nationwide outbreak or, or international, I think, global outbreak of of measles. I think is what I saw. And then there was something else I can't remember uh, that they were saying could be the next big you know pandemic and the World Health Organization is looking into the next big pandemic all this kind of stuff so uh, winter coming on and uh, all the economic and energy problems happening all over the world and then this you know if that's what happens uh, would be pretty devastating this rail strike thing stay focused on that uh, apparently they have till December the 9th to come up with any kind of agreement 
but the rail companies are stating that they're going to start cutting back services somewhere around December 4th, I believe, is what I, I saw, and before the 9th. They said, they already said that like last week or so, that they would start shutting things down before uh, the strike if it looked like it would happen, and as of right now, that's exactly what it looks like. Will Congress intervene? And the bigger question is, will Congress intervene in time? Uh, there's a, some speculation that they will, but they'll wait until after the strike starts to kind of come to the day. Maybe they're going to blame the Republicans, maybe not. Who knows? Who knows? This has been like the slowest Band-Aid removal ever. It's been going on for months now. But the thing is, is if it happens, it's going to be pretty devastating. Uh, all Now, all of the uh, unions have said, you know, even if one union goes on strike, none of the other unions are going to cross the picket line. They will honor that one union strike, and basically everybody will be on the strike. This is absolutely hugely devastating if that happens. It, it, it's one of those events that could bring the nation to a screeching halt if the entire rail system goes on strike. I know, that's a worst case scenario, and that may not be what happens, but we should at least plan accordingly for those worst case scenarios. Other thoughts on my mind, economy, um, it, most of you see it, you know, you, whether you're watching my channel or someone like Economic Ninja or you know, other channels, Johnny Bravo, there's a few others out there that, that really focus a lot on the economy, the Epic Economist, I think, if that's the name. Anyways, it seems like we're just on a knife's edge right now. And I kind of wonder how the markets, how the economy is going to react uh, when it's quite possible, at least that's the way it's looking and all the experts are kind of already saying this, that when these fourth quarter numbers or uh, it could happen in the next days or weeks because you know we have the Black Friday uh, yesterday or a day before and then we've got the Black Monday and all that which are supposed to be really big shopping days and from everything that I'm seeing they're probably not going to turn out that great so what's going to happen to the markets and the economy when the retail industry starts saying yeah we had the worst or one of the worst Black Friday, you know, opening shopping seasons that we've ever had, that we're not going to make any money this year, we're going to be in the red, it's bad, it's worse than bad, um, which is very possible that we're going to hear from them. And my, my question is, is how is the markets and the economy going to react to that? Is that going to be that final straw breaking the camel's back? Is that gonna be the thing that causes the markets to say, all right, that's enough, we're done, we're done, we're walking away. You know, if Walmart and Amazon and Target and all these other big companies, if they can't make any money even during the, the Thanksgiving and Christmas shopping season, then then we are toast, we are, we are in a recession. I don't know, it's just speculation on my part and I'm certainly no expert in that, but it's something to think about, so, as you're having a wonderful weekend, uh, extra long weekend, think about that. Be aware, be prepared. Get your houses in order, folks. Prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.